Hello friends and welcome into Seattle Seahawks today. I am your host Tom Downey here to chat about the NFL Draft which is just around the corner. I guess one extra day of course for Seattle with no first round pick. But today we're discussing whether or not they should trade back from their current second round selection. The Athletic has pitched this idea. We've kind of mentioned it before on the show but I wanted to give some trade examples here in just a minute. But logically, this checks out. It makes a lot of sense for Seattle to look to move down, assuming a team wants to come up. They only have three draft picks this year. Moving down would allow Seattle to add extra draft picks, have more chances at what in reality is a bit of a crapshoot, and give them more opportunities to find depth players and maybe even a future starter or two. I'd rather have six, you know, dice rolls than just three to find the number that I'm searching for. And as of right now, Seattle really only has two valuable picks, and valuable is even maybe a stretch for that round four one. Round seven pick 250, that's, that is a lottery pick at best, and your odds are not great in all, in all uh, likelihood. Round two, that's a very valuable one. Round four, 129, not bad either. But then you look at that this team's needs where you're looking for a number three receiver, a likely future starter at center and or cornerback, a future offensive tackle with Dwayne Brown and, and Brandon Shell entering the last year of their contracts and getting older. Defensive tackle could use some help. Well, even linebacker needs, needs depth. So the only way to do that for Seattle without trading up future picks or moving players is to trade down. Now, using the more modern, updated NFL draft trade charts, there are a bunch of different moves Seattle could do. So let's run through. I got four different ones, varying degrees of moving down. This one is moving down slightly in round two. They can move from pick 56 to pick 59 and acquire a future fifth round pick from the Cleveland Browns. So three spots in round two, you're looking at a mid-ish late fifth round pick. Not that valuable, but you could also maybe move down multiple times, which they've done before if they follow this path. Now, if they want to move down further to pick number 62, the almost very end of the second round, Green Bay, a logical trade fit here. Again, all these trades work out quite well in the NFL trade value chart. A fourth round pick comes to Seattle, and now you still got a, a second round pick and a later fourth round selection as well. So you could get a, let's say, center in round two, plus a receiver and let's say a cornerback in the fourth round. That one intrigues me quite a bit. Now, if they want to move all the way out of the second round, the Jags are a perfect match here. They, of course, get 56 overall. Jacksonville does. Seattle gets number 65 and a mid-ish fourth round pick, number 140. So they do slide down further, but again, you're getting more back in a trade. And then, of course, there's a pretty substantial slide down in the, in the third round with the Detroit Lions. So they go from 56 to 72, but they get number 112 overall on top of that. So th those are two pretty valuable draft picks. And just like that, C Seattle goes from having, you know, one pick in the top 127 to at least they've got two in the top 112, plus they got number 129. So it's not that bad in terms of adding extra shots at what, in again, is going to be a bit of a wild card draft, I believe. So what do you guys want to do here? Do you want to trade down? Get your votes in for me right now in the comment section. Type Y for yes or type in N for no. Now, if Seattle does trade down, hey, we're going to be live for it on our Chat Sports YouTube channel. I'll be there for not just round one or round two or round three or round four, but for all seven rounds. Every single pick will be broken down as it happens and in many cases before the major networks break it down as well. Will I be upset about Seattle's pick this year? Maybe not. There's no first rounder for me to get all, all bent out of shape about. So subscribe if you have not already to our Chat Sports YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash chat sports TV right there, bottom of your screen. And we'll put it both in the comment section and in the description. Some free agency buzz I wanted to get to. Eric Fisher, how about signing him? I was very impressed by what I consider to be a creative idea here pitched by Sports Illustrated over with their Seahawks Maven Fan Nation page. How about Fisher as a future replacement for Dwayne Brown, i.e. not 2021, but what about 2022? Now, Fisher's coming off a torn Achilles suffered late in the playoffs. I don't know if he's going to be ready at any point 
in the 2021 season, and there's always a chance Seattle or the Chiefs want to try and bring him back for the future as well. The idea of adding Fisher intrigues me because when he's been healthy, he has been at least a starting caliber left tackle. Now he is older, and you do wonder if adding a future left tackle who's going to be around 31 by the time he would actually play for Seattle, in theory, is the best option. But it makes some sense, especially with, with few draft picks this year and, frankly, next year. If you don't want to try and develop somebody, signing Fisher and stashing him is a creative way of accomplishing the exact same goal. Yes, he's older, but he's also more proven. He probably wouldn't play much and help you much this year. But if Dwayne Brown retires or leaves after next season, Fisher steps right in. It's not nearly the level of drop-off you would likely see if it were a, a, a second-year player or a first-year player or a cheaper veteran who's not as good out there. So Fisher, of course, would have to be interested, but I am pretty intrigued by this one as a potential idea for Seattle. So what do you guys think? Do you want to sign Eric Fisher to this type of like, not, it's not really a futures deal, but it kind of is from, from a, a goal perspective? Get your votes in. Type 1 for yes or type 0 for no. Let's talk Julio Jones now. And I honestly, I wasn't even going to put this in today's show, but several of you have asked about it previously. And I saw Fansided put together a trade package, which we will get to in a second. To recap the, the background stuff here, multiple reports to the Falcons are listening to trade offers for Julio Jones. Now, any trade cannot be done until after June 1st because if, if the Falcons traded him during the draft or before June 1st, an extra $17 million ends up getting charged to their 2021 cap. And it's just like trading Russell Wilson right now. It's not feasible from the team's, like his current team's perspective. They wait after June 1st, they save about $20 million over the next two years. The Seahawks, frankly, folks, make no sense as a landing spot because they do not have the capital to make it happen. Now, Fansided put this together, and I'm reading off a direct quote here. I think the Seahawks would at least have the Falcons' attention if they called and offered their 2022 third-round pick and a decent defensive player like Trey Flowers. Excuse my language, this is crap. This is a, who do we think Julio Jones is, Mohamed Sanu? This is less than what the Falcons got back for a washed-up receiver in Mohamed Sanu. A late third-round pick and a backup corner in Trey Flowers? Are you kidding me? That's your offer? W what do we think Julio Jones is? Washed? I know there are injury concerns. That's fair. I know he might want a big deal. That's fair. How are we getting Julio Jones for even less than what DeAndre Hopkins went for? Are you kidding me? Do we really think that's a good offer? That is horrible. That is one of the worst trade offers I've come across in years doing this media thing. That is a disrespectful offer. And to throw it up with, oh, you could also just do a future second round pick and no player. We're trading Julio Jones for the 54th overall pick? Come on. Now, like, it's fun. DK and Tyler and Julio, although Julio probably wants to get paid, and he just paid Locke, and he wanted to pay DK Metcalf. So probably makes sense for neither party involved. But just to answer your questions, it's not happening. Like, same like there's no Odell Beckham trade coming for Seattle either. Like, if they trade for a receiver, it's not going to be someone of that caliber and contract cost. Now, I'm probably going to regret this because I almost always do whenever we do it. If you want to have some fun at my expense, trigger me in the comment section with some just awful, horrible, no good, terrible, bad trade ideas. Because what ends up happening is I forget that I asked this question. And then I go back and look at, in the comments and I see horrible trade offers and I trigger myself as a result. So go have some fun and try and get, and get me all angry like I just was with your bad Seahawks trade ideas. Back to free agency here one more time. Deonta Foreman, this is interesting to me. The Seahawks have brought him in for a tryout. Now, he's a bigger back who was a third-round pick back in 2017. Big battering ram type, tested pretty decently out of Texas. I thought he was going to be a good, good football player. Has not been the case. Uh, he's coming off, frankly, one of his best years in, in Tennessee, which was 22 carries for 95 yards and a long of 15. 
The interest in Deonta Foreman is interesting to me. Now, it's just a workout, so maybe they're just doing some due diligence for training camp or something along those lines. He'd not been a good football player, if we're being honest here. Just 107 career carries for 421 yards, one away from being awesome, but it's an under four yard per carry average. Two touchdowns as well is okay. He's, he's nothing special. And where he would fit on this depth chart is what's most intriguing to me. Because there, there's Chris Carson, Shot Penny, DJ Dallas, Travis Homer, Alex Collins, five guys who played snaps for this team last year. And it's just another indicator to me that Seattle is not confident in the, even though there is volume, in the quality of depth behind Chris Carson. And I wonder if something could happen during the draft. Maybe it's Rashad Penny, maybe it's Dallas or Homer, but Seattle keeps showing interest in different backs. Because of that, I wonder if there's another move coming down the road at that particular position.